Now here in medical coding, we'll provide language of medicine, ICD-10 CM, CPT-4. In language of medicine, we have a medical terminology, anatomy and physiology, and pathology. Now first come to the medical terminology. What is medical terminology? So medical terminology is based on three main portions. One is known as prefixes, the second is known as a root word, and the third is known as suffixes. Just take an example. We have a one medical term that is known as pericarditis. That means what? Inflammation of surrounding of heart. Peri means what? The surrounding, outer covering of heart. Cardio means heart. Itis means what? Inflammation. So inflammation of outermost layer of heart is known as pericarditis. That is called medical terminology. Come to the next point, anatomy and physiology. In anatomy of physiology, I am going to explain one system little bit that is called urinary system. We are just going to draw an image of kidney. So here we have an image of kidney. Here kidney, what is the function of kidney? Kidney filtrate the blood and remove the waste material in a form of urine with the help of ureter, urinary bladder, urethra and urinary meatus. Now come to that section of the kidney. Here kidney contains calyx which is divided in minor and major calyx. Next uh, we have a cortex, we have a medulla, we have a pyramid. Now pyramid contains papilla. In papilla we have a granulus and we have a nephron. And nephron is the functional and structural unit of kidney. Okay, now I am going to explain regarding the digestive system. Now, in human body, we have a two type of digestion. One is known as mechanical digestion and the second one is known as chemical digestion. Digestion starts with our oral cavity. In oral cavity, we have a tooth, which is responsible for mechanical digestion. They crush the food particles from macro to micro and mixes in the mouth in s with saliva. Here the first chemical digestion starts in our mouth. Now the food particle which mixes with the saliva is known as what? Bolus. Now this bolus need to come into the stomach for the further digestion. Here the food particles which is known as bolus is came into the stomach with the help of esophagus. With the help of esophagus muscle. It is a long tube-like structure made up of epithelial tissue. Here, the bolus came into the stomach with the help of periostaltic movement. With the help of periostaltic movement. What is periostaltic movement? It is nothing but a rhythmic contraction and relaxation of esophageal muscle. After that, we have a one muscular structure at the end of the esophagus and the beginning of the stomach that is known as cardiac sphincter. That is known as cardiac sphincter, also known as esophageal sphincter. Also known as esophageal sphincter. Now here, stomach is can be divided into some parts. One is known as cardiac region. Why? Because it is very, very nearer to the heart. The upper curvature is known as fundus. The greater curvature is known as body. And the lower one is known as antrum. Here in the stomach, we have a hydrochloric acid. We have a pepsin. We have a trypsin. That means we have a gastric juices. Now the bolus mixes with this gastric juices and known as chyme. Known as Chaim. Now, this chyme need for move to small intestine for further digestion. Once the chyme move into the small intestine, here we have another muscular structure is there that is known as pyloric sphincter. That is known as what? Pyloric sphincter. Here, the chyme came into the small intestine and 90% of digestion occurs. 
Now a small intestine is further divided into some parts. One is known as duodenum, which is attached with the pyloric sphincter. The middle portion of a small intestine is known as jejunum, and the last portion of the small intestine is known as ileum. Here again, the ileum joined with the large intestine, joined with the large intestine, also known as colon also known as colon. Now we have another sphincter in between the colon and small intestine that is known as ileocecal sphincter. That is known as ileocecal sphincter. Here colon is further divided into four portions. Further divided into four portions. One is known as transverse. Next is known as descending sigmoid and ascending. Ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid. The beginning of colon is known as cecum. At the cecum, there is worm-like structure that is known as vermiform appendix. And that digestion is completed at the outer opening known as anus. This is the single way digestion process from mouth to the anus. Apart from that, we have uh, some accessories organ like liver. What is the main function of liver? To secrete the bile juices. Next, gallbladder. What is the main function of gallbladder? To store the bile juices. And the set, last one is pancreas. What is pancreas? The pancreas is the single gland which acts both exocrine and endocrine in our body. So it is also known as dual function gland. The exocrine part, the exocrine part of pancreas helps in digestion, secretes trypsin, pepsin, direct into the stomach with the help of hepato pancreatic duct. Next, the endocrine. Endocrine part of the pancreas, it contains isolates of Langerhans. The isolates of Langerhans contains four types of cells. One is known as alpha cell, second is known as beta cell, next F cell and delta cell. The alpha cell secretes glycogon, the beta cell secretes insulin, the F cell secretes pancreatic cell and the delta cell secretes, what is that? That is somatostatin. Now this is the entire process of digestion. We'll have to remember each and every portions. Thank you.